Why is Gua, uh, why is Venezuela so important? Why why do I keep talking about Venezuela? Conti, why don't you talk about your own country and leave Venezuela alone? Because it what it is, what Venezuela is right now, it's it's our diplomatic uh policy on display, right? It's our it's the way we deal with our neighbors, it's the way we deal with our friends on an international level, right? That's what's going on here. Right? And what we have is our politicians, the swamp, Pompeo, John Bolton, Elliot Abrams, Steve Mnuchin, Donald Trump, right? The, the swamp, right? Lying to the American people about the situation in Venezuela. Are they lying? I don't know. There's a lot of evidence to su- suggest that they are lying. Someone said, Conti, you need to go to Venezuela and uh, find out for yourself. Well, if you want to PayPal me 20 grand, you know, to two grand, I'd be happy to get on a plane and go to Venezuela, but we don't have to. You know why? Because Max uh, Blumenthal, the, the uh, investigative journalist down there, is doing it for us. He's down there, and he's telling us what's going on. So I'm going to play Max's uh, uh, videos, and uh, we'll talk about Juan Guardo returning Flew, right? He was in exile for a week or two, and he, he flew back into Caracas, uh, got on, a, I, don't know, I guess, a commercial flight, flew into Caracas, was greeted by people at the airport, and then he, they shuffled him over to the big rally on Monday. I don't know, a couple of, it looks pretty, I, I, I got some video of the crowd size there, so we'll look at that too. So let's, uh, let, let's, just, let's just recap, right? So who is Max? Max Blumenthal, right? Is there food in in Venezuela? The our our swamp is telling us that we have a humanitarian crisis, right? We're in a humanitarian crisis, right? And um, <laughs> right, but is there a humanitarian crisis? How do we? Fish heads, fish heads, roly poly fish heads. Okay, we got like congealed meat. We got like so much meat. There's a lot of meat here. So this is Max Blumenthal down in, in a supermarket in Caracas, right? Now, okay, there's, there's rich places and poor places. There's vast income and wealth inequality in the country. And Max right now is at one of the wealthier places, right? Now, is it a, a humanitarian crisis? Is it, every, is it a, the troika of tyranny like uh, John Bolton the walrus is saying? Is it a Marco Rubio and these guys are saying it's they're starving their people, a vile dictator? Let's there's no evidence of it. I mean, a lot of tomato sauce. You can see the aisles are pretty full of stuff. I mean, they got a whole aisle for pasta. I'm gonna dance with myself. A lot of people who love yogurt two of them here. Yeah. Oh, salsa. The <laughs> Cruelty of this dictatorship so prevents lots of food, lots of food, zero lots of meat on the yogurt. table. There's energy drinks, all That's kinds funny. of drinks. Shut up. Sugars. Who is, I don't know what this says. Does it say Maduro is using goofy. hunger as a weapon to enforce communism among his people? Sandwich. Uh, so just aisles and aisles of food. This toilet. Right? We've already seen it. Right? So what? So what's going on? So Juan Guaido, Juan Guaido, Guaido, right? Is back in Venezuela, right? The defiant Venezuelan opposition leader, Juan Guaido, landed at Caracas Airport Monday in time to join the street protests against the repressive government of President Nicolas Maduro. Right? We know the risks that we face. That's never stopped us, the 35-year-old leader of Venezuela's National Assembly said as he moved through a crowd that included several Western ambassadors. <laughs> uh, so... So that's um, so that's that's what's going on. So I just wanted to throw that in there. I'm going to play more. I got more on uh, the actual return of Juan Guaido. But let's look at let's continue with Max Blumenthal's investigation. So he he found out that in certain areas, right? Oh, actually, you know what? Because then people say, well, that's just a rich neighborhood. But he he did. Let's play the. Bolivares, and then over. The- so also the the other thing to note he. He went, on, uh, he went on vegetable oil the poor, here, more protein, and he went on to the poor neighborhoods too, and he found the the subsidized food uh, pantries. This is the bread stand. Uh, it's really cheap, so it's being sold. The big, the large breads are being sold for two thousand bolivares, which is less than one dollar 
for all that bread. All right, so you can watch this video video for yourself, right? So he's he's basically exposing the fact that that the people there's no starving people. He hasn't shown us any starving people yet. So we have to take it at face value, right? So now he he pivoted. He saw the rich neighborhood, the poor neighborhood, the food crises. The humanitarian food crisis is not really anywhere to be found. There 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 is evidence that people are are leaving the country, but again, that's an that's a different story, right? That's a different story. All right. So here he is. He made his way to a, a very rich mall in Caracas. Okay, so I'm back in uh, Chicao. I was here a few days ago. Chicao, sorry. Uh, this is a wealthy area in Caracas where there was a huge opposition oh, rally headlined by Juan Guaido to call on the Venezuelan government to allow in humanitarian aid. And people there told me that they lived in a communist dictatorship hellhole uh, with a massive humanitarian crisis. So I'm back to see it for myself. Right, so so that's what we that's what we were told. You remember the big concert by the billionaire? He had a billionaire billionaire put on a concert in Caracas to dumping money in there to bring all the, the the wealthy people out to protest the poor people. That's now we're in their now we're in their neighborhood and we see the reality of it. The socialists have done in Venezuela all of the same things that socialists communists, totalitarians have done everywhere that they've had a chance to rule. The results have been catastrophic. Hola, soy una turista de los Estados Unidos. Estoy buscando por socialismo. No hay socialismo aquí. Un dictador comunista. No es aquí. <laughs> Te gusta Maduro or uh, uh, Guaido? Guaido? Guaido. Okay, so here's an out. He's in search of socialism and com communism. It's really, really rather brilliant stuff. Store adventure store. Uh, urban front. What is this? Floors. You can get really nice doors. This is a security door. I feel safe in here. Maduro's goons won't get me in here. Disculpe, ¿cuál puerta es más seguro contra face, contra los goons de Maduro? Estas son puertas de seguridad que reciben impactos de vara. Pero el goon squad de Maduro puedes hacer miedo así. No te gusta Maduro. Para nada. Para nada. Y ustedes también. No. no. Nadie en aquí. No. Nadie. So these are the capitalists. They don't, they don't like Maduro, right? So this is a political issue in the country. It has nothing to do with us, right? Here's some, there's, there's a, a, a sliver of wealth and the, you know, the, the, it's capitalism, right? That's what it is. And it's, it's grotesque capitalism in the sense that some people have all the wealth and no and most of the people have none of the wealth right it's the same thing here it's just they're going through the same goddamn thing we're going through tortas parece muy sabroso es sabroso si y hay mucha gente que tiene hambre aquí no and then you have really so many others rummaging through trash, something you and I would consider unconceivable, so common wherever we saw there. I mean, even ourselves, with an unlimited budget, we found it often quite hard to get food, and that is so staggeringly the reason why people are so furious right now. Because he doesn't know, the CNN, they don't know where to shop? What fucking liars. They, they, they're fucking liars. So, anyway, what do we got? We got some really good carrot cake here, marmalade. Hola. Estoy en soy un turista de los Estados Unidos. Estoy buscando por comunismo. Quiero un estilo comunista aquí. No puedes hacer un estilo comunista de Maduro. Estoy buscando por comunismo en este lugar. No hay. His humor Gracias. doesn't fly. Okay, so in the U.S. they say like Maduro's ruined the economy with socialism, and I can't really find any here. I'm going to keep looking for it. 
Uh, that's what we constantly hear from the Republicans. But it seems like capitalism really is taking over and there's massive speculation. Uh, here's a chocolate place. Let's go check it out. Except on efectivo. Dollars. Okay. Uh, soy un turista de los Estados Unidos y uh, escuchaba constantemente que um, Maduro destruyendo, es destruyendo esta economía de socialismo. ¿Es una tienda socialista? No hay go control del gobierno. No. Okay, ganache. So, so confirmed, no government control. So there is, it's a capitalist country, right? There's ca it's not socialism. It's, it's not, it's not the strict socialism in the sense that, that the, the swamp is painting this old scare, red scare, right? It's a mixture. It's a mixed economy, right? Where the, the Maduro regime is, they have, you know, very, very low cost gasoline, free public transportation, right? It's their own, they have their own issues within the country, right? But it's, it, the economy is almost identical to here except that the hyperinflation there is greater. We have hyperinflation too. That when, and it's defined by people that have to work two and a half jobs just to survive. That's hyperinflation, uh, uh, the, the radical right. Get your head out of your ass and, and, and fess up to it, right? When people have to overwork just to scrape by, that's hyperinflation. It means that their money doesn't have the value to sustain life, to sustain any... To, you know, to, okay, yeah, you could eat, right? Oh, great, fantastic. But you're too fucking tired to do anything else, right? Hyperinflation. What do you, what do you guys want? Algo comunista dictadora. Y Maduro permitan uh, para vender uh, chocolates. It's legal uh, uh, bajo de Maduro a vender. He's asking about he's asking the commoners about about government regulation on what you can do and what you can't do, and they're laughing at him. They don't even know what he's talking about. It's like, you mean we can't sell chocolates? It's it's, it's so ridiculous what I'm trying to point out. What the, what Blumenthal is pointing out is that is that the the idea of a dictatorship is in Venezuela is ridiculous. Chocolates. It's legal for you, you can sell chocolates under Maduro. Maduro. It's Menor. just a little socialism. And no voy al preso para comer chocolate. Un dólar. todo eso. So a dollar, I got some really nice chocolates for a dollar. Suck it, Maduro. Riva Guaido. Yeah? Riva Guaido. Woo! Todos por Guaido. See, the, the, the thing about it is that the capitalists would benefit from a regime change. But guess what? They lost the election, right? There's not, it's not the majority. It's a very, very small minority, right? They're saying that that the uh, so it's a, it's a small small sliver of the people that want change and then, and they they're welcome to do it, but again the the discussion of Venezuela is not about Venezuela. It's about our involvement in Venezuela and the way our government is lying to the people to bring on a coup, a collapse of their economy, a regime change. For our own benefit, to get you know, to get a foothold in Pedavesa in their oil. To how come there's, there's, you notice there's no McDonald's, there's no Starbucks, there's no you know fucking Apple Store, right? That's what they want to do. If they if if Guaido wins, his CIA you know the CIA contact whatever. Oh, he's not in the CIA. Of course he is. He's a fucking CIA you know Pompeo and those guys. We we get the, the corporations get a foothold in Venezuela. That's what it's about. It's not a humanitarian crisis. Todos juntos. Gracias. Again, this is, as you can see, it's a real opposition stronghold. People are on board for Guaido. They want the humanitarian aid. They def these people. See, the, 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 the bigger, the, the greater point is that, is that this, this scenario that Max Blumenthal is pointing out is not possible in a totalitarian 
place in a dictatorship, right? In the dictatorship that they're saying exists, this reality is not possible, but we're seeing it with our own eyes. I mean, the crisis is just hitting hard here. Memphis. Soy uh, de los Estados Unidos. Uh -huh. Estoy buscando por el um, uh, socialismo. Porque es escuchaba mucho de socialismo en Venezuela. Es Nadie puede ayudarme para um, encontrar socialismo en este lugar. No comunismo aquí. No dictadura. No. no. Y no crisis humanitaria aquí. Crisis humanitaria. Un poquito. poquito. So a little bit. So he's talking. That was an honest thing. No, no communism. No, no dictatorship. Right. That's a guy. He's probably you know. He's got some bucks in his pocket. Right. He probably owns one of the little shops. Right. And and you, you're hearing you're hearing some honest. The other thing is uh, is they say that uh, that it's very dangerous to travel in Venezuela, right? They're putting that one that scare on there. Don't go there. Don't go there. They're telling people, oh no no, you'll they'll fucking rob you, right? Well, where's that? Where's the evidence of that? Todos somos Guaido aquí. Vamos Guaido. Sí Guaido. Suerte hermano. Damn you, Maduro! Yeah, fine. Uh, napkins. <laughs> Lo siento, en serio. Don't worry. Aquí está. Thank you. From the American people. <laughs> From USAID. <laughs> Guaido, vamos a cambiar. And we decided to take a break for some food. Uh, we got kind of hungry looking for socialism in Chacao. I'm actually facing the street where the opposition marched the other day in support of humanitarian aid. And uh, I, I ordered a Pollo Crispy. Um, and you know, for all the talk we hear of socialism here, uh, it's really hard to find in this area. And maybe the problem is that there isn't enough. So so the, the op he's, he's sitting there eating a hamburger or whatever, by the um, by, where the opposition uh, that concert was, the billionaire put on a concert, right? So here we are at the um, this is this is Juan Guardo, the great leader, right? So the the Guardo people are lobbying for humanitarian aid, but we just saw that they don't need it because because they're living high on the hog. They want to create a crisis so that the Americans can cut, help help them topple Maduro. So that they can make more money. Because uh, it looks very possible that Juan Guaido is in that car, about to step out to speak to all of those protesters there in the capital. And you can just hear just the level of anticipation, of shouting. Of so now he was supposed to get, he's still subject to being locked up by Maduro's regime, right? The, the government, the government of Venezuela, because he broke a, a uh, travel ban. He violated his travel ban. All right, but he's back, and there's no consequence uh, yet. Phones blaring because he has been out of the country for a number of days. In that period, of course, Venezuela, they tried the opposition to get humanitarian aid into the country. They tried and failed. That was blocked by Nicolas. Maduro, and you can see the security, the door opens, and there it is. Quite extraordinary scenes there in the center of Caracas. And if Nicolas Maduro is what So good for them, right? We we're not we're not frowning on their, their right to protest and be heard and and run an opposition party, right? All of it is good. It's all fucking good. Right? But the reality is the reality is um 
What is our involvement? So this is the, uh, so he was at the airport and, and we saw all that, right? But here he is now at the uh, Capitol. Thousands came out to protest. All right, let's see. Impressive crowd. Wow. Maybe, I don't know, maybe 5,000, 6,000, 8,000, 10,000. 32 million people in the country, a couple, couple of thousand came out to rally for Juan Guaido. Is that the majority of the people? Are we going to say that because one guy, the rock star status now, because he's got international backing to overthrow the government and draws 10,000 people? Is that the... Is that the, the deal that breaks the camel's back? Is that it? Is that is that justification for overthrowing the United States, getting involved, and aiding the overthrowing of the Venezuelan government? I think not. And another crowd shot. There's a lot of people, right? No, no doubt. All right. So, so there you go. So, what's the takeaway here, right? You've got internal stuff going on in Venezuela, right? You've got the president of the country who is an economic idiot, right? He doesn't, he can't figure it out. Right? There's something wrong, an internal problem within the country. And they, it's for the Venezuelan people to figure it out, right? They have good things, free gas, free, you know, very, very low cost uh, uh, food, right? It's subsidized, right? Everything is, is, it's it's not ideal, but it it's working, right? They have their own goddamn problems, right? And here's here's an opposition party, right, of of socialites, globalists that are trying to promote another agenda for Venezuela. In in our view, in American view, or Western view, yeah, they have their rights to do that. But what we don't have the right to do is interfere with their government, with their public opinion. I mean, America wants to say, oh, the Russians interfered in our election. They should be, uh, you know, condemned. But meanwhile, we're trying to organize elections that overthrow their government by, by propping up a, a, uh, a candidate, right? That's what we're doing. We're propping up a candidate and trying to sell him to the people. The bottom line is there's no economic, there's no economic crises in Venezuela that that is is visible that is is justifiable it's not like Rwanda or some you know or you know Libya what's going on right it's not it's not dire straits it's not people eating out of garbage pails it's 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 income and wealth inequality it's a broken economic system right and that's that's the bottom line right that's the bottom line we have no business being there Marcus Conti reporting.